share the glory and we're singing Cause this story must be told We sing glory, come on glory Glory boys, give us a goal Our king's a great tradition Let the, the NSL East in the Eastern Seaboard Thought no one existed past the Nullarbor Glory, glory, bird, glory Glory, glory, bird, glory I would describe Perth Glory as a club who was halfway to professional football. Prior to the NSL clubs agreeing we should have a team in Perth, they put some onerous conditions on us. We have to pay the FS for all the visiting clubs. We had to pay the, uh, uh, the accommodation, the meals and so on. So they made it very difficult for a Perth team to go to and compete over there, or for them to come here. It was a name that was put forward by the agency. And when it was put to, at the first board meeting, um, I mean, our faces just we just looked at each other and thought, mm. uh, needless to say, I thought it was brilliant. Everybody else thought it was rubbish. In the old days, Western Australia was thought of being as a lower class of uh, football players. And to me, I think the team in the first year proved that once they got going on a probably a shoestring budget, they proved that their players in WA were good enough to play in the national scene. It was a dream come true for me, you know, to get into, uh, to go into the National League and thank, thank God I met uh, Gary Marocchi, you know, and he took me along with him. Just we weren't full-timers, you know, a lot of people worked, um, you trained a lot probably was harder in those days than they are professionally because um, you know you had to work eight hours and then come training four nights a week so it was very difficult. I remember days we would train on, on a Saturday afternoon here, play Sunday. You'd have you'd have Nick Tanner and his family and Paul Afgos and his family out around the ground doing work on the hoardings, painting seats. The day before the game Vinko and Anthony Murray were putting the last coat, uh, coat of the paint on the old stands at the back. Yes, we did paint the grounds and we painted the, the, the seating and the Maury was there 24 hours a day painting it and stuff like that. <laughs> we all chipped in. I was involved with another club uh, 20 years ago uh, in the National Soccer League at South Melbourne when Perth Glory emerged in such a spectacular fashion and it changed the face of football forever. The first year was unbelievable. I mean, uh, it was something new for WA, so therefore you got a lot of, um, a lot of people to the games. Uh, I think it was a big average uh, crowd that we got throughout the year. Just the camaraderie within the, the team, the, the, the local lads, uh, everything come together, the coaching staff, right down to the, the guy who done strapping. It was, it was just a really big togetherness and it was, it was really, really enjoyable. The best thing about our team was probably the, the dressing room and the, and, and the culture that we had. So, and I think that reflected in, in the people that came and the support that we had. So, yeah, I think it was, it was, I think it was the team spirit. It was a plan to go local, but I think, you know, we, we brought a couple of imports in, like Vinko Bully Bazic and the, uh, and the Kiwi boys, Gavin Wilkinson initially, Danny Hay. I think locally was the way to go. Back then, a lot of the uh, players um, were local players that uh, came here and they finally got that big chance and they just played with pure passion and heart. The first game that we played, that we, even though we lost, I thought we played really well and it was, it was difficult. We were a team brought, to back, brought together in the last minute. Um, we were sort of trying to do the best we could for what we had and I think we did well that first season. The first game obviously was a big buzz and, and everything around and surrounding that game and um, you know we didn't have no expectations how many people are going to be there and uh, to walk out to sort of 11,000 people there and going wow. I remember going in the changing room and we had the, uh, the bench seats. I jumped up and looked out at the, at, the, at the shed. I said to the boys, I said, boys, you don't believe how many people are here. Like, I mean, I've got my dad here, um, and he was in that shed with 20 of his Armadale boys drinking, spilling beers, you know, going nuts. I came to the very first game. I think I've still got the ticket. So, yeah, you know, 
for me, being someone who grew up in a generation where Perth didn't have a team in the NSL to start with, that was sort of like really exciting to me. Probably one of the most memorable, you know, moments as far as um, you know, starting off a, 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 a new era, if you want, uh, you know, first uh, NSL side from the WA. So, so that's probably the most significant moment. Yeah. To be honest, I'm, I'm proud of uh, actually being part of the inaugural side as opposed to the goal that I scored. Perth did score a valuable consolation in the 89th minute. I, I get cramped just thinking about it because it was very, very late in the game. And I remember the ball getting knocked wide to, to my, my friend Dale Wingle and he knocked a ball back across diagonally to the back post in front of the shed. And I can remember it was just that little bit in front. I made a dash to get it. I got my head to it, knocked it back across the goals into the net. And the, the noise was phenomenal and I ended up behind the goals with cramp. We're the family here. So if you live here and you play here and you're facing people that are in the shed supporting you down on the streets, it's, it's, it's a family atmosphere.